Today, I get some help. Rogier has arrived. I sneeze. <coughs> ah! oh. All right. oh. And my girlfriend does a little dance. <laughs>
Then we're going to replace the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth connection in this hole. And obviously we have ourselves a new iDrive controller. It feels very crisp. The buttons feel rock hard, just like my <laughs> Then we have this brand new CID with touch. And of course our NBT EVO ID6 head unit. So then we also have this brand new panel for the radio and climate control. As you can see, one of the clips broke off. I do have the clip still here, but we're not going to glue that. We're going to do it right, hence why we ordered a new one. All right, so before we start assembly, we quickly transfer the radio and air conditioning controls over to the new panel. For the radio, it's simply a matter of unscrewing two screws, popping out the radio controls with a plastic tool, disconnect the connector, and repeat the process for the air conditioning controls before popping them back in, connecting the connector, and screwing back in the two screws. All right, so before we start repairing the cables that have been cut, we have to prepare these cables. So in this case, we have uh, cut the cables to the right diameter and the right length in order to get the right length in the car. Then we prepared some heat shrink for the cables, which we need to attach before we go to solder the cables to the car. And the same goes for the uh, FM AM cables. So these exist out of three parts, basically. So first is the core which we need to solder to the, uh, the car side as well. Then we need to isolate this from the uh, shield, and then we need to solder the shield to the car end as well. And that we're going to wrap up with some new heat shrink. And then at the end, we're going to attach some heat shrink on this as well, which we need to add to the cable before we start soldering. All right, so the next step is to remove the center console. So we're gonna pop out some tabs and hope that we don't break anything. So we're gonna start out over here. There we go. <laughs> oh, yes, All right, so there we go. All right, so this is what we're presented with now once the center console is removed. Um, so yeah, look here. Tell us what we're going to do next. Yeah, so Roof just removed the entire center console and now we're going to replace some of the HSD lines which are responsible for the USB connection to the head unit. So in this case, this car has a USB hub, meaning that we have two USB outputs, one in the rear, one in the front. That means that we need to replace this cable that goes all the way through here to the head unit, which has been unfortunately cut on this side. So we're going to replace that with a new cable. And we're also going to replace the Bluetooth connection, which is over here, which unfortunately also has been cut. And we're also going to route the Wi-Fi uh, connection to here, which is responsible for Apple CarPlay and the Wi-Fi hotspot in the car. All right, so we're going to remove this cable from the cable harness. To, to do so, we would need to remove these clips and then unwrap it from its cotton tape so that we can remove it all together. All right, so this is our cut Bluetooth cable, and this is our cut HSD cable. So we are now going to cut these, isolate them, and we're going to tuck these under the carpet, as there's no current running through these cut cables anymore. And afterwards, we're going to reroute the new Bluetooth cable and the new HSD cable. After Roof has uh, removed the old cables that have been cut, we're now going to uh, replace these with new wires. So now we've bundled the wires, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and USB HSD together. Uh, and we're going to place these in the car, route them along the existing wiring loom and make sure that they are fitted properly. We're going to route the new wiring harness now uh, on the existing wiring loom over here. So what we do is we enter the connectors here. So loop them outside, make sure that you leave enough room and space for you to work with. 
and now we're going to route the cables here along with the existing wiring loom back here so we have our HSD connection here for the USB hub which we are going to connect like so this is the Wi-Fi connection which is going to sit over here and we have the Bluetooth connection which sits over here all right, so as you can see, Rogier has now routed the new cables along the existing wiring loom, all wrapped in BMW's OEM fabric tape. Then it was a matter of cutting the damaged cables down and wrap these up with the same fabric tape. There is no need to isolate these as there is no current running through these cables anymore. Completely removing these cables would mean that we would have to completely remove the carpet as well as removing these cables from the main wiring loom, which is basically a never-ending task. So, unfortunately, they also have cut the cables on the OHBR connection, which is responsible for the GPS and the online services of the car. So, they've cut all seven cables. These are CAN cables, and these are the communication cables with the HL module. So, they're not the right length yet before they can get soldered. So, we need to cut them on the right length, which is about here. And we're going to cut all seven at the same time, same length. Same goes for the uh, FM, AM, and DAB+. Plus. The sizes of the cable are not equal in length, so we're going to cut them as well on the same length, like so. Alright, so now we're going to route the cable of the CID with the darker shade of pink on top, like so. Alright, so we're now going to install the CID. Um, this is actually officially the first part of the rebuild that we're going to install. So pretty exciting. Look at it, it's brand new. I want to thank you here again very much for this, for sourcing this for me. Uh, so yeah, so let's go ahead and install this. So it should be easy as connecting this pink connector, like so. Then we're going to drop this down. And carefully place it in place. Then with two T20 screws, we're going to torque it down. Alright, so with the display officially installed, we can go ahead and do a function test to see if it properly works. Alright, so besides to check if this bad boy will work, it's also to check if our newly routed cables will work. So after connecting the cables to the new head unit and provisionally connecting the radio controls, we turn on the ignition and note that it all works well. As you can also see, the iDrive controller works well and the USB connection is functional again, as the music and the charging of the phone shows. All right, so the next step would be to prepare the wires that have been cut. For these FM, AM, DAB plus cables, this would mean to strip the outer layer, uncovering the shield, but also to strip the core of the cable, as you can see here. For the OABR connector, we also strip down the seven cables. So the next step in the preparation process would be to tin all the wires, so to speak, so that we can easily solder the wires to each other when it's time to. So we tint all the wires both in and out the car. Afterwards, we prepared the rest of the heat shrinks. We cut them to size and put them around the cables before the soldering process could begin. So as you can see here, we had to make lots of different sizes of heat shrinks because of the varying sizes of the different cables. So once we covered all the cables with the heat shrinks, it was time to solder these cables to one another. For the FM slash AM slash DAB cables, we had to solder both the core as the shield of the cable. So these took a little bit more effort. Then it was simply a matter of sliding the heat shrinks over the soldered wires and let these mother burn. And then finally, it was simply a matter of wrapping the cables up in the fabric tape we used earlier. All right, so we're done with the repairs of the cables to the head unit all in accordance with BMW spec and the correct color codes, as expected from the Hunter Hoffman. All right, so now that all the cable repairs are finally done, we're covering the final cables with the OEM cotton tape before assembling the center console again. All right, so now that the center console is back in, it's time to connect the head unit. Now she's going in like a glove. Car's back alive again, boys. Oh yeah, look at that full screen Apple CarPlay.
There we go. All right, so after screwing in this driver's side footwell panel, part one of the rebuild is officially done. As you can see, we have a fully functioning center console and head unit and navigation screen with the latest software and the latest maps, as well as full screen Apple CarPlay. So yeah, on to part two. All right, that was it. I'm super happy with these new parts and how it all went down. I now have a slightly more modern head unit as well as the latest maps and software and full screen Apple CarPlay. I again want to massively thank Rogier for his help and knowledge and he'll probably help me out with the rest of the rebuild as we're not done yet, of course. Next time, it's time to pump up the base and do some more mods. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time! <laughs>